let's not hide anything here. Let's just open up the book and say, hey, this is the stuff that Kevin's going through in his business. Like, let's just open it up. In this video, we are going to be talking about a deal that we have going on with my team. And obviously, Love here is handling the file. And she says, you know what? We should do a YouTube video on this because this is an interesting deal. And to be honest with you, we just, I literally just pressed record and I have no clue what's going on with this deal. But <laughs> I want to I want to highlight the fact that this is this is how it, this is how an actual business should be right like love takes care of all the of all the back end stuff and I get this deal sent to me by a JV partner somebody says hey I need a, I need help finding a buyer for this sub two deal that I have and my, obviously my partner and I, my partner Lorraine and I we find the buyer and we give the file to love and I, I honestly I didn't even know the address of this file um, it's on uh, Skyline Drive here in Rowlett Texas mm -hmm. what's going on. But love, what, what's the, what's the story with this one? Let's, you're like, you were, you were yeah. like, you could do a YouTube video on this. So let's see what, let's see what this is all about. Oh my goodness. I remember last week we were like recording a whole different video and I'm like, did you hear about what's going on in your deal and what we had to do? And you're like, no, I actually don't know anything. And I'm like, okay, let me give you a recap. And you're like, you know what? It's better. I don't know anything. And let's just push this towards a, 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 a YouTube. And I think we can do stuff like this, right? Like if people get value from this, we can do case studies on your deals and what popped up and, you know, how did we deal with it? And how did we keep everyone updated? Or how did we continue to keep the transaction um, to, to, to hit the finish line? So these yeah. are really cool. Um, but this property in particular, there have been a lot of hiccups. Um, you know, it, how, first of all, how do people submit their deal with you if they want to JV with you? If they have a lead and, you know, they need help, how, how do they go about that? Um, if people have any creative deals that they need help with, I only do creative deals, sub to seller finance kind of, kind, of, kind of deal. And they can go to dealswithkevin.com. It's deals, like D-E-A-L-S, with kevin.com. And, and you can send me the deal there. And my partner will get back to you in 12 hours. And we've always done that. So, yeah, that's how you submit deals. I love it. I love it. And um, are you in every state or are you in specific markets only? Oh, we're only in specific markets like Arizona, Las Vegas, Texas, Florida. Those those are those are our strongest markets. I mean, we've done you know deals here and there outside of those markets, but you know, I I love sticking to my core core four markets. Those are my own, you know, I love doing those deals. I love doing deals there. Yeah, I love it. And this video, it, because we're in Texas a lot with um, your deals, a lot of your deals, but Texas is just also one of the biggest markets we have um, that our clients are in, Texas, Arizona. And so with us being in Texas, we have really great connections, right? We have great connections with escrow companies. We have great connections with law firms. We have great notary connections. And I say that to say that is also the reason on why we were able to protect all parties. And I'm going to go into what happened and why we needed to do what we needed to do. But it's really, really important to develop really great relationships and connections with people like Pollock at Hudley. He truly shows up for us in so many ways. Um, and in this instance, it's by holding a deed before the seller signed, you know, any documents um, and, and, you know, just holding it there, right? And even before them sending their disclosures and their needed closing documents to the seller to sign, they're just trusting us. And they're like, I don't know what they're doing, but yeah, we'll hold it in our office. Why not? Um, okay. And so- let's, let's not hide anything here. Let's just open up the book and say, hey, this is the stuff that Kevin's going through in his business. Like, let's just open it up. <laughs> yeah, like, we're going to go. Are you, are you prepared? Are we just we're going to tell it all? We're going to go it. fully. Yes. And again, there's a million ways to do things. We're not attorneys. This is just something where it happened. And I'm like, this is what we have to do to be able to make sure that our buyer is protected. Because if our buyer is protected, that means our clients, you know, Kevin and Lorraine will also get paid, right? That means that the deal would get to the finish line. What the buyer did in this instance is not recommended in any shape, way, or form. He wired in funds to an outside entity prior to closing and prior to seller signing closing documents. Wait, why, why, what's outside entity like a, another- type? Like it wasn't, you know, when you have to reinstate a loan, Yeah. most times you send it through a title company or through a law firm, right? And then they go ahead and pay it off, right? Everything is going through the, the escrow account. In right. this instance, the buyer sent in the funds to um, a bankruptcy <laughs> trustee and 
with no assurance of anything, with no assurance that the seller is going to sign, right? And I heard this, I heard this happening. And I'm like, hold on, stop the brakes. Wait a minute. Let's not do that. The, I'm pretty sure that we can think of other ways to protect people before we have them just send in the funds, right? And he was willing to do that um, initially because the title commitment came back clear, right? So he knows, hey, I signed up to buy this property with the underlying lien. I see that on the title commitment, it only shows the underlying lien. So his risk was then lowered, right? Like that was, uh, he didn't just send it in with no title commitment, with not knowing if there are any encumbrances on there. He's like, okay, I'm I'm willing to risk it. Um, but what just just to give clarity now, okay, let's start from the beginning. I, well, by the way, that's a seller. great buyer to have in your Rolodex. <laughs> He's amazing. And oh my gosh, Andy loves you, Kevin. Oh my, he cried when I was calling him during the situation. I was just calling everybody and I was talking to him and he's like, yeah, you work with Kevin, man. I, I want you guys to do exactly what you do for him for me. Okay. Like whatever you do for him, do it for me. I'm like, okay. Shout out to we Andy, you. man. Andy, you're the man. <laughs> no, truly. He's awesome. He's, he's really awesome. Um, but you guys brought this, um, you guys connected with this wholesaler. He's direct to seller, right? This seller is filing for bankruptcy, okay? okay. And I, I, I'm not sure the back end of it in terms of when did he connect with the seller alongside his bankruptcy um, proceedings, but somewhere along the lines, the seller already talked to a bankruptcy attorney. He was already getting it processed, right? And he didn't, have intention of even selling his property, okay? And then along those lines, Rod came into the picture, spoke to the seller, was able to then also speak to the um, the, the bankruptcy trustee and was able to verify that, hey, if they exempt the property from the bankruptcy filings, um, then, you know, that means that the seller can then uh, resell his property via subject to, right? And it, it it doesn't add to the loan that's already pretty high due to his personal debt, right? right? So the trustee was like, okay, amazing. If you want to exempt this property, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. And that pretty penny was like near $9,000, okay? <laughs> All right. All right. I don't want to be the distraction. Okay, let's keep the, let's keep the story going. <laughs> Right. So, um, th like I, this was, by the way, Jane is the one that is really, you know, direct on all your files, right? I'm back and I'm bigger picture. I'm things getting escalated to, I'm thinking of how to, you know, grow our, our brand and all of that. But, um, she's really the day in day out, really making sure that the, the back and forth with title is, is, you know, going along greatly, that we're getting everything we need from sellers, that everyone's updated. She's really, really the one that's been handling, you know, the files, right? And so um, we got on Zoom and she was kind of telling me, she's like, yeah, so like, I, you know, I knew about the bankruptcy thing, but I didn't know that, you know, Andy was just sending in the funds without getting protected, you know? And so we started brainstorming and we're like, hey, Andy, um, yes, you're going to send out the check right now. And when I was calling him, he was literally driving to send out that check, Kevin. Okay. Oh literally on his way. And he's like, man, I just, I just trust Kevin. I love Kevin. And I know this is going to be a good deal. And I'm like, that's oh, great. <laughs> I'm like, that's great and all, but there are a few things we can do. And um, a few of those options are you can file a memorandum, right? If you file a memorandum, that means you're um, putting interest on the property. So, you know, let's say the seller decides not to sign the closing documents. If he decides to sign to sell with someone else, you'll be notified. And, you know, conversation would have to be had with you prior to him closing with someone else. Right. And that conversation, meaning you're going to get compensated in some shape, way or form um, and giving them that approval to sell. But what if the seller never sells? Right. Your money is still tied in your, your, your $9,000 is still tied into this deal. And another option, a secondary option is filing a note in deed of trust. Right. And that protects also your interest in the property. And that's, I guess, more of a, um, an assured secondary option because now you can actually foreclose on this person. Right. But if you have a deed of trust and you're foreclosing, 
there's still so many other lien holders before you. So what are what's the likelihood of, of you getting paid, right? So hey guys, real quick, I'm going live every single week in my school community to help answer everybody's questions because number one, I can't get to every single one of them in a timely manner. So click the link down in the description box below and I will personally help answer your questions. Again, we were all going back and forth, right? And um, Jane was like, I told you know the buyer that we'll file a memorandum and that's what they were gonna do. Um, but I just wanted him to feel more protected. And I'm like, what we can do is, you know, before we even tell the seller that you sent in the, the check, we can make sure that he signs a, a warranty deed um, and then also post closing documents, right? And we'll have it held with the escrow company. And of course, the escrow company is not going to record that warranty deed, right? They have their process. They still need to send in their, um, you know, th their disclosures, their their own closing documents. So they're not just going to record that, but it's more so of a psychological thing, right? If in the event that the seller decided that he no longer wanted to sign come closing date, right? He already got his bankruptcy. He already got, you know, his property that he can stay in. You know, it's exempted from the bankruptcy. It's 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 paid. Um, he can probably find if, you know, the loan was only behind like a month or two, right? If he really wanted to, he can probably find someone to reinstate it, right? Yeah. Um, so that option of like, hey, let's have him just sign the warranty deed. It's, it's to protect the buyer. And if anything happens, that warranty deed will get sent back to the buyer and he can, we can still record and do everything in-house, right? We don't have to go through the title company because they also have compliance, right? right. So this option of just, let's protect you. We're still going to file a memorandum that's been filed, right? It protects his interest in the property. You, you um, filed it for him? Yeah, we filed it for him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, we filed a memorandum. Um, and then we coordinated the notary literally as Andy was at the FedEx sending the check. We coordinated the mobile notary to go to the seller, right? After setting expectations with Rod as well, I told him, hey, Andy is not willing to send in the money unless you you tell the seller that he needs to sign these these documents, right? And it's just security for us. Um, Rod delivered. He called the seller. He got the seller's address and his exact um, location. We were able to have him sign, you know, the warranty deed, the post closing documents, and that's just for record keeping, right? We're just gonna hold it. We're not gonna proceed with filing anything, recording anything. It's just an assurance. So it's already in the seller's mind. Hey. I already signed this and there are going to be additional documents that I need to sign, but I'm already in a locked up agreement. Even if I decided to change my mind, I can't. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of the option that we provided. And Andy was ecstatic and over the moon, you know, Rod was also excited and you guys, that means that this deal is, is more near the finish line. Wow. That's kind of scary. Like, like, like Andy was literally driving to send over the check and you just caught him perfectly at the right time before he did. It was crazy. I even recorded this on Zoom. I recorded this. It was so crazy. It was like one of the most, it was so funny though. So so this deal, when when are we supposed to close on this? I think it's um end of this week. It's okay. it's scheduled for this week, but I'm I'm not sure. I think it's like Thursday or Friday. The title commitment's already back. Okay. Um the check should have been already received. So now we just need to schedule the, you know, um the signings and everything, but and wire and funds, but we're good. Wow, I never even thought like in my entire life that stuff like this would happen and on my deal and I don't even know what's going on. Like <laughs> I, I I knew that you were telling me I, I knew that like Lorraine was like, hey, you know, you know, she gives me very brief updates. Like even like my partner, like I talked to her twice a week, you know, Monday and Thursday. Yeah. And yeah. and I'm so first off, thank you so much for getting involved in, in deals like this. Like, you know, most no, number one, most transaction coordinators wouldn't really know what to do because they don't have experience going through this nor do you have i don't know if you had experience but you you know you've told so many transactions that you're like okay this is option number one option number two and option number three and we've executed on option, and, and, and both of the options and that goes with everything i think that's the theme of this right of all the videos we've recorded that there's no right way to do anything right it's just what's people's risk tolerance right what's your risk tolerance and how can we protect you know all parties to where it ensures that we can get the deal closed. So 
I even did this um, activity with my my the the team members. I, I brought this up. I'm like, because everyone focuses on different departments with our company. Like we have our self-performed, we have our one-off, we have our subscription. And so I, I brought this question up. I'm like, what would you guys do in this situation? And everyone had different answers, you know? And there is no right answer, but this is the answer that I thought would just, you know, um, ensure that everyone is protected the most. Well, thank you for not calling me when, when stuff like that happened. When, when, when was this last week? Yeah, this was like, I think Thursday. I was probably golfing or something. I went <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> wow, guys, this is why you need to have a transaction coordinator that's actually experienced and knows what she knows what they're doing. Because love, like you, you pull the trigger and you made the executive decision on my files and said, this, hey guys, this is what we're going to do. And, and we're just going to do it right, you know? And I'm so thankful that you, you did you did that without even letting me know and you know making the right decisions for me. Because to be honest, if I were in your in your shoes, I probably wouldn't know what to do. To be totally honest, never went through a seller going through bankruptcy on a step two. I I've heard about people like you know I've heard about you know the stuff on the, you know over the over the you know as people are doing it, but like I've never yeah. been through it. And I'm so glad that I didn't know what to do, but I knew you that you would you have you would take care of my file. So thank you guys. Oh, um, yeah. do you know, what's crazy too, though, to add to that just really fast. Like we've never had a seller in this exact situation either. Like we've had sellers file for bankruptcy to halt a foreclosure and stuff, but we've never had someone like reach the finish line. Right. And like, yeah, it was just kind of a combination of multiple things, but um, yeah, I I'm glad that we can get this to the finish line. If we, if, if we do, and I'm pretty sure we can, it it's good. All right. Well, fingers crossed. We're going to get this done, but well, thank you guys, guys, this is why you need to have a tra transaction coordinator. Go to intentionaltc.com for any of your transaction coordination needs. Um, these transaction coordinate love is vetted. She's, she's done my files for 18 months and now I'm bringing her on now. Now I talk about her all the time because I want people to see what you what you should be expecting from a, out of a TC, right? Um, so, love, love, thank you so much for uh, handling my files and intentionaltc.com. Anything else you want to say before we uh, before we hop off? No, 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 no. Tune in to more of the Cho Show with Kevin. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll do more of these like, <laughs> deal breakdowns because people will love it. People will love these like deal breakdowns. It's so good. It's so it gets me excited. I love this. Like it, yeah. it gets me going. It doesn't get me excited, but if it gets you excited, then it gets me excited, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I I think what like overall, like I like these higher level problems, like the day to day of like what Jane does, I can't do, right? Like if I had to be behind a computer and like focus, I have bigger picture things, things get escalated, right? But um, stuff like this, where we're able to just make everyone feel like safe and it's a step in the right direction and people, you know, feel good. Like, I love that. I love yeah. that. And I love taking that initiative. So, well, there you guys have it. Intentional CC. And I'll see you in the next deal breakdown video. Bye guys. Bye.